Hello and welcome to Herman Hits the Road. I'm Zoe and this is... Ads. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> and we're going to talk about our top five places that we visited. Is that right? Hello and welcome to Herman Hits the Road. I'm Ads and this is... Zoe. I did exactly the same. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Herman Hits the Road. I'm Ads. And I'm Zoe. And in this video, uh, we're going to be telling you our top five places to go in a motorhome. So in collaboration with other vanners, you can check out their videos in the card at the end of the video or from the links in the video description. And I do recommend that you check them out because they're really good. So um, top five places to go in our motorhome. Well, mm. this was a difficult one for us because we've been to quite a few places and uh, there are quite a few nice places we've been to. At, uh, in England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland and abroad um, but we found uh, so it's very difficult for us and uh, I think the weather helps as well with the experience and um, what we're after what we tend to enjoy are beautiful views in yes. the countryside yes that's right would you say we like towns we do like towns I like a bit of both really I like the right. um, you know the the nature side of it and the um, walking mm. but i also like to see what the area you know the towns and cities has to offer as well yes so just a bit of a mixture yeah okay our first one and so these are in no particular order but except for the first one the first one um we're going to be aiming this one at new motorhomes so if you were new in the motor if you have a new motorhome or uh, you, you, this is your first motorhome. Uh, then the first one I would recommend you visit would be the New Forest. So the New Forest uh, has uh, camping in the forest uh, campsites, and those are actually quite good for caravans, motorhomes, tents, and all that kind of thing because it's wide open space. They have about 500 pitches per campsite, which is enormous amount mm. of pitches. Uh, you can go anywhere and then you have in some of them you have the facilities uh, you have obviously you have your water and emptying facilities in some of the sites but you'll experience being disconnected from electric hookup you kind of it's kind of a wild camping you'd experience have to use your gas, wouldn't yeah you, you have to actually look up you're disconnected from the campsite as well, itself but of course there's facilities that you can go and use if you need to the, mm. the big advantage i think of these campsites is that you're in amongst the wildlife in the new forest especially you have wild ponies wandering around uh, sometimes you have cattle little ponies and all this kind of thing so it's it's really good to be to feel like you're out in the wild as it were our next one would be in scotland and that is the north coast 500 especially mm. the west coast and the north coast North West Coast, I suppose you could you could say <laughs> all that way along there. You're following mm. the uh, the coastline, and uh, you've got mountains one side, and you've got the sea the other side, and or mountains as well on that side as well. For the driving experience and for the countryside, I would recommend North Coast 500 mm. or the NC 500 is what people call it. Our first experience of camping without a campsite um, was in Shieldag, and that is on the west coast. Uh, and then we up, mm. up the north there was another experience that I will never forget and that was on the Kyle of Tongue where we wild camped right on the edge of a lock there and we can see the mountains in the distance you can see the lock in front of us mm. and uh, I got up quite early and I managed to see my first British otter where were you at that time? Well you keep mentioning this don't you why have you got to wind me up? <laughs> <laughs> she was in bed <laughs> Seven o'clock in the morning, wasn't it? Mm. Oh, I think it might have been earlier. I think we were very lucky with the um, NC500 as well because we had glorious weather, didn't we? I mean, you know, for the two weeks we only had a little bit of rain, yeah. which is really unusual, isn't it? If anything, it was too hot on some days. Recommend, though, if you do intend going to the oh, North yes. Coast 500, go to the website first. There's tons of information on there and there's a map as well. 
uh, go to that website. There's also uh, like um, frequently asked questions or something. Mm -hmm. Read that, uh, or like it's like giving you advice and information about how you should drive the North Coast 500, telling you about you know the narrow roads and the, the passing bays and all this kind of stuff mm. and do's and the don'ts. So check out that website. And uh, if you're interested in a map, you can get a map, not buy it, it's free, uh, from Center. Inverness Information Centre. And also you've got to be quite careful what, what time of the year you go, haven't you? Because we went, was it May? And it I wasn't so, too yeah. bad for the insects. Yeah, and the there were midges around, but yeah, uh, not midges, too bad. they will get through the net. We but, actually brought a net, didn't yes, we? Yes, yeah. There's a net. So the next one, um, going a bit further afield here, is Northern Ireland. Uh, especially the the north coast there. Because in the north coast, it might not be very large, Northern Ireland. Uh, but along the coast there, you've got a good few miles of, obviously, coastland. And mm. uh, lots of things to go and see. Such as, and these are all in like 30 minutes of each other driving, such as the Karakareed Rope Bridge, Demesne and Hazet House, and the, the Muzendin Temple, that's a mouthful, uh, that's all in one uh, National Trust uh, site. And then there's ob obviously there's a Giant's Causeway, which you have mm. to see. Yeah. Just amazing. Obviously, a few other places you could go to to do with the uh, Game of Thrones, but there's also Dunlaus castle mm. that was right on the edge there. very Beautiful. dramatic uh, mm. castle that it's a ruin but it's got walls and uh, mm. it's very interesting and of course finally around that area is uh, the Bushmills distillery who like a bit of Irish whiskey <laughs> <laughs> our next one will have to be Wiltshire now I know it's a large area but uh, we're thinking that if you have a base at Camping and Caravanning Club Devizes, you're right on the Kennet and Avon Canal. You can have lovely walks into Devizes itself. You can go up the uh, the 23 flight, 29. lock flights of Carn Hill, is that 29 right? locks. 29 locks. So it's great for walking and cycling. And then, of course, in Devizes itself, the town, you have Wadsworth Bit Brewery, mm. which is always a good visit. All around that area, are uh, it looked like a short uh, drive away are white horses like mm. you know chalk horses carved into the hillside uh, just got to find them they're all on, on maps and stuff um and of course it's the center wiltshire has got to be classed as the center of neolithic history so you have uh, another short drive away you've got uh, the avebury stone circle standing stones in the stone, stone circle uh, you've got stonehenge of course not too far away uh, and then you've got the East Kennet Long Barrow. That's uh, mm. basically a barrow where people have been buried. Uh, and then you've got that huge hill called Silbury Hill. And it's like loads of things, loads of interest. And you can actually walk to them. Yes. Uh, you know, just r uh, join them all up in a big, long um, That's probably why circular we, walk. Yeah, we've been to Wiltshire for quite, quite a number of times, haven't That's we? Right, because yeah. there's so much to do there so much to do mm. and it's all outside yes. in, in the nice countryside there mm. so our final one has got to be west coast of ireland an island again ireland again but this mm. is now ireland rather than northern ireland mm. uh, along the wild atlantic way so if you look at a map of ireland on the west side, it goes in and out like that, all the different estuaries, and it's very craggy and uh, and it's very scenic. Uh, we've got um, Mizen Head, which is a like a, a bridge with some amazing views from the islands there. We mm. we've got the Skellig Islands. You can go and visit the Skellig Islands, and that is where they filmed the Luke Skywalker scenes from the recent Star Wars movies when he's on his island and he's doing his thing. Uh, you can go visit them. There's a few other places you can go for Star Wars uh, spots. Uh, there's um, Slee Head, which has just amazing coastline. Um, very narrow road, but you've got, you've got a mountain on one side, and then you've got like a drop the other of a tiny little wall. It's just incredible. And you can see the traffic in, in the head of you because it's going around the bay. It's just amazing. Mm. Um, and then 
all the way like, travel follow follow that uh wild atlantic way all the way to dingle that's where we stopped we didn't go yeah, any we further didn't than go, that. yes that's right i mean it doesn't stop there does we it we spent two weeks doing that bit mm. and we missed loads and it's, there's so much to go and see there it's just incredible yeah, so we isn't could have it? done with longer really mm. couldn't we yeah so thanks for watching our video do check out the other videos in the collaboration list and check uh, see what they're up to we'll see what places they visited and recommend uh, you can see that you see links to those videos in the video description or you can go and click on this link here this card here in front of Zoe's face uh, and you can go to the playlist so thank you very much again don't forget to subscribe and like and until next time goodbye everybody and thanks for watching wow and you're out all right there we go